out in American history, funneling money to taxpayers, the unemployed, and small businesses slammed by the coronavirus outbreak. President Trump hoping for an Easter miracle, looking to ease restrictions across the nation in less than three weeks. Easter is our timeline, what a great timeline. Defying the nation's top health experts. You need to evaluate the feasibility of what you're trying to do. As officials sound a new alarm for New York City, now considered a high risk area, the governor concerned hospitals only have two weeks of critical supplies left. What am I going to do with 400 ventilators when I need 30,000? And strict new guidelines are announced. Everybody who was in New York should be self-quarantining for the next 14 days. As more states plead with the federal government, saying they are running out of time. New cruise ship crisis. Dozens of passengers and crew reporting flu-like symptoms stranded on board. Meals delivered directly to their rooms and waiting for those COVID-19 tests to be brought on board as the ship makes its way toward Florida. Olympic heartbreak. The summer games now officially postponed. America's top athletes responding this morning. This moment is uh, unprecedented and it's bigger than any sport. 12 time Olympic medalist swimmer Ryan Lochte joins us live. Also this morning, tornadoes hit the south, devastating damage in Mississippi, and a new storm on the move, bringing heavy snow to the west. More possible twisters to the heartland. We're tracking the latest. And feeding America, what you need to know before you go to the grocery store, the right way to shop in these times. And across the country, America is asking the same question, how can I help? How food banks are stepping up to fill the need and how you can pitch in right from your home. Live in Times Square, this is Good Morning America. Good morning, America, everybody. It's great to have you with us. It's nice to have Amy here as well. And it's great to have Robin joining us from her home on this Wednesday morning. Happy hump day, Robin. <laughs> oh, happy hump day to all of you there in the studio. A short commute down to the screening room in my basement. But like so many, under these circumstances, working from home. And so much news to get to. So many people relieved to wake up in their homes this morning and hearing about that $2 trillion deal headline. Help is on the way, George, for so many people who are hurting. That is right, Robin. Never before has Washington moved so fast in such a big way. And now President Trump is setting mm. a remarkable goal for getting back to normal, saying Easter is our timeline to reopen the country. The question, can that really be justified as this coronavirus continues to spread? There are now more than 55,000 cases in the U.S., more than 800 deaths. New York now the epicenter of this global crisis. 23 states are restricting non-essential work. And we do have some breaking news this morning. Prince Charles has tested positive for the coronavirus. We're going to have much more on that coming up in just a bit. Right, but we begin in Washington, where the White House and Congress reached a deal early this morning on the economic rescue package that dwarfs the entire national budget of the United States. The stock market soared on hopes for the legislation. It's best days since the Great Depression. And our senior national correspondent, Terry Moran, starts us off with the details on the deal sparking so much hope. Good morning, Terry. Good morning, George. Well, they closed this deal late into the night in an atmosphere of crisis punctuated by partisan bickering. But they got the job done. And this bill will, as you say, throw an economic lifeline to businesses and to workers who are getting absolutely hammered by the coronavirus pandemic. At last, we have a deal. Just after midnight at the Capitol, the Senate leaders announced that Congress and the White House had reached an agreement on an unprecedented $2 trillion spending package. In effect, this is a wartime level of investment into our nation. The rescue bill designed to offset the crippling economic impact of the coronavirus pandemic providing over $800 billion in support for businesses big and small, boosting unemployment benefits, and sending one-time payments of $1,200 directly to most American taxpayers. To all Americans, I say, help is on the way, big help and quick help. The legislation could now be passed and enacted within days as Congress works to deliver critical financial support during this crisis. Welcome news to laid off workers who won't get a paycheck this week. The stimulus check would definitely help with my mortgage as well as our two car payments. It would definitely help our family. 
Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell says that bill will be voted on in the Senate today. Then it goes back to the House, where it's expected to pass quickly. President Trump has made clear he wants to sign that bill right away, so the money should start flowing very soon, George. And it's going to go to individuals. You have extension of unemployment, those direct checks. Now, this fund for the businesses, though, is going to now come with some real strings attached. It does. One of the Democrats' major sticking points was that uh, there is a $500 billion, uh, half a trillion dollar bailout bill for those big businesses hit very hard. Democrats wanted transparency on that. They got it, uh, an oversight committee. Also, there's a line in there that Democrats wanted where businesses controlled by the president, the vice president, members of Congress, and heads of the executive departments, as the cabinet members, are prohibited from receiving federal funds. This is to make sure that none of the Trump hotels get it. President Trump has been talking talking about his business, about how hard the hotels are getting hit, uh, but he's not going to get any money from this. George? Terry Moran, thanks very much. Robin? And George, as you know, cases in New York are skyrocketing and is now the focus for resources for the White House Task Force. And Tom Yamas is in Times Square this morning. Good morning, Tom. I know it's become a real hotbed there right there in our city. Good morning. It is, and there are new restrictions, Robin. It is always incredible to come down here to Times Square and to see the crossroads of the ro ro world so empty, so few people out here, and now new restrictions, as I mentioned. Federal health officials are saying anybody who left New York City should now self-isolate for at least 14 days. This morning, a new timeline for America. The president hoping to ease some of the coronavirus restrictions and jumpstart the economy by April 12th, Easter Sunday, less than three weeks away. What a great timeline this would be. Easter is our timeline. What a great timeline. But the deadly virus is still spreading, and the nation's top expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci, offering a different view. That's really very flexible. We, we just had a conversation with the president in, in the Oval Office talking about, you know, you can look at a date, but you've got to be very flexible. And on a, on a literally day-by-day day and week-by-week week basis, you need to evaluate the feasibility of what you're trying to do. Health officials also alarmed at the infection rate in New York City, the epicenter of the pandemic in the U.S. 60% of the country's new cases come from right here. And now, new guidelines for anyone who recently got out. Everybody who was in New York should be self-quarantining for the next 14 days to ensure that the virus doesn't spread to others, no matter where they have gone, whether it's Florida, North Carolina, or out to far, far reaches of Long Island. Governor Andrew Cuomo says he looks at stats every night and now believes the virus's peak in New York will be faster and higher than expected saying hospitals without reinforcements may run out of critical supplies in two weeks. FEMA says we're sending 400 ventilators. Really? What am I going to, what am I going to do with 400 ventilators when I need 30,000? The White House pushing back, saying 4,000 ventilators are being delivered. I asked Governor Cuomo about the president's new timeline. To President Trump, what, what would your message be about balancing the economy versus making sure this no longer spreads? We have to be smarter about it. You can't sacrifice human life to get the stock market up. And in Louisiana, which has one of the fastest infection rates in the world and the death toll is rising, Hospital the state's care. governor, Bell Edwards, is pleading with the federal government for more help, saying he's running out of time. The trajectory that we're on uh, is very problematic. Uh, the growth rate that we're seeing exceed the capacity to deliver health care. And this morning, we're also hearing about some of the lives lost. 34-year-old cancer survivor Jeff Gazarian of California tested positive for the virus after seeking treatment for pneumonia, spending five days on a ventilator before losing his battle. He just had a lot of love and humor and could approach and talk to anybody. And to give you a sense of the need for doctors and volunteers here in New York City, NYU's medical school announced overnight that any student that has met their requirements will be able to graduate early and get out there on the front lines, Robin, to help everyone who needs it here in New York City. That's really telling, Tom. Thank you. Michael? All right, thank you, Robin. And we're going to bring in our chief medical correspondent, Dr. Jennifer Ashton, who is joining us from her home. And, Doc, good morning to you. And, Jen, New York City released uh, detailed statistics of its 15,000 cases. What numbers jumped out at you? 
Well, Michael, I, I listened to that press conference that Governor Cuomo gave. Take a look at these numbers from the New York cases to date. At this time, 46% of all cases are in a younger age group, ages 18 to 44. 62% of all deaths are in men, and 54% of deaths are in people 75 years of age or older. And the trajectory in New York City is concerning. And everyone has been practicing social distancing. We've been talking about it for weeks now. President Trump said he wants to open the country, hopefully by Easter. So does that make social distancing more urgent in, in the current situation? Oh, 100%, Michael. And you have to understand that what we're seeing today actually represents something that happened two weeks ago. That's why the steps we take today are so essential. And if you look at this animation, if you imagine one sick person then spreads it to, let's say, two or three people, if one of those sick people stays home down the road, it has the potential to cut the number of cases almost in half. That's why this is so important. Mm, very important indeed. Now, there are new reports that some doctors in New York hospitals, they're giving patients who have COVID-19 massive doses of vitamin C. Is there any science that that helps? Yeah, there's been a, actually a lot about the use of vitamin C as a treatment in critically ill patients. The data is controversial, and again, it needs more research, but right now, this is for a treatment, not prevention. Not prevention. <laughs> All right, Doc, thank you so much for that, and I'm sure this year we're going to be checking in with you quite a bit. George. Okay, thank you, Michael. Let's bring in Tom Boster, President Trump's former Homeland Security Advisor. And, and Tom, let's start off by talking about this new goal set out uh, by the President, this April timeline for getting back to normal. That's his hope. That's his goal. Take us inside the deliberations in the White House right now as they try to figure out what kind of data could justify that. Notably, the science advisors have not said it's something right now that can be done. Yeah, George, you know, the, the lesson of Easter is one of resurrection, but it's preceded by a lot of uh, despair and, and death. So I, I was struck more by Dr. Fauci yesterday asking us to examine the feasibility of what we want to do. And I think that was a good phrase, not just feasibility, but want. The president wants to do this, but I'm not sure we've got the resources to do it in a careful way without reintroducing second wave infections in places like New York and now very troublingly New Orleans. Well, yeah, that's the question right now. We heard Governor Cuomo here in New York yesterday say that what's happening in New York is a bullet train heading for the rest of the country. And I think that's what a lot of people are thinking is what we're seeing now in New York, something that the rest of the country is going to face later. Yeah, George, unfortunately, and this is always hard to wrap our minds around, the numbers we see in New Orleans are about to experience that exponential growth. In other words, multiples of 10 or more. And that will overwhelm their hospital system as well. And so I'm worried about New York. They're in the thrust of this overwhelming growth. Uh, but I am now very worried that as that governor in Cuomo in New York is worried about resources, other governors with legitimate competing needs are going to surface first Louisiana and then elsewhere in California and so on. And that's an important point. The governors are really in control of what happens in their states. Well, they are, but George, that's the, that's the whole f uh, function of FEMA here, to try to help adjudicate competing needs for scarce resources. Tom Bosser, thanks very much. Amy? George, the pandemic bringing the globe to a standstill. More than 400,000 cases worldwide. In India, officials now banning all 1.3 billion citizens from leaving their homes in what could be the largest lockdown in history. They're, of course, trying to avoid the disaster in Europe, which brings us to that breaking news out of the UK. Prince Charles has tested positive for coronavirus. Let's go to James Longman in London with the latest on that. Good morning, James. With his wife, the Duchess of Cornwall, uh, they uh, they tested positive. He tested positive for the virus in Scotland, and he's there now with his wife. She, we understand, has not tested positive. And obviously, there's some concern for uh, the Queen. Obviously, this is a woman in her 90s. We are told the last time she met with the Prince of Wales uh, was on March 12th, and uh, the palace is saying that the Queen and other members of the royal family are following all medical advice. Uh, that is being offered to them. Britain, of course, now is uh, on a national lockdown, uh, doing everything it can to try to prevent the spread of coronavirus. But it's obviously very worrying that a member of the royal family has now contracted it, even though we're being told that he does have mild symptoms. Michael?
All right, James, thank you so much for that. And the transportation industry, they've taken a huge hit in this crisis. So take a look at this, this sign of the times. With airlines cutting back on flights, this site outside of Los Angeles is just one of the several airfields out west that is known as a boneyard, where planes are parked until full service is resumed. And obviously, as you see right there, it is full. And on the sea, this passengers from the Grand Princess finally leave quarantine one month after they first boarded. We're learning about trouble on a new ship heading for Florida. 77 people falling ill with flu-like symptoms. And Gio Benitez is at a cruise ship terminal here in New York City with more this morning. Good morning, Gio. Hey, Michael, good morning to you. Yeah, the cruise was supposed to end on Saturday, but now five days later, those passengers are still on board, stuck at sea, and this morning, they are sending us their desperate messages. This morning, 77 passengers and crew with flu-like symptoms stranded on board this cruise ship off the coast of South America, making its way towards Florida. 305 Americans among the more than 1,800 people on Holland America's Zandam ship who have been asked to remain in their rooms. The ship does not have any COVID-19 tests on board. Another cruise ship bringing those tests to the Zandam tomorrow night, along with other critical supplies. There are many people in their 70s and 80s in the ship and quite a few disabled. The ship left Buenos Aires on March 7th for a two-week South American voyage, but days into their journey, the cruise line suspended its global operations because of the outbreak. Ever since, the ship has been in limbo, unable to dock. We boarded the cruise on March 7th. There was only one case of the virus in Brazil and one case in Buenos Aires, so we really had no concerns about joining the ship. Passengers say they haven't been off the ship in more than 10 days. Their meals now delivered directly to their rooms. So many waiting for answers in the coming days. Holland America telling ABC News that the safety and well-being of our guests and crew is one of the highest priorities, adding, our intention is to proceed to Fort Lauderdale, Florida for arrival on March 30th. However, plans are still being finalized. Alternative options also are being developed. Now, we should mention researchers recently tested the cabins of another cruise ship, the Diamond Princess, and they found the virus on surfaces up to 17 days after passengers had already left the boat. Just incredible, Robin. 17 days. All right, Gio, thanks very much. We want everyone to take a look at two doctors, two doctors from the Mayo Clinic in Minnesota. They are bringing comfort through music, performing John Lennon's Imagine. Living for today Ooh, You might say that I'm a dreamer So many talents. The doctors told us music goes places that medicine cannot go. They picked Imagine because of its message of hope. The world coming together as one. I think we all can relate to that. Don't you think so, guys? Yeah, that gave me a lot of hope listening to that. I want yeah, that doctor to be my doctor. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot more coming up. The 2020 Olympics have now been officially postponed, as you know. We're going to tell you what Team USA is saying. And gold medalist Ryan Lochte is going to join us live first here on GMA. Also this morning, why one university is reopening its dorms to students in the middle of the crisis. But first, let's go to Ginger, who is at home. Yeah, that severe weather forecast verified. Look at this tornado, Tishomingo, Mississippi, and listen. Oh my God. All right, let's get to the sunny cities now. Oh, look at you. Don't you worry about paying for all that data? Oh no, I'm on Consumer Cellular. Oh, I've got a great plan with Consumer Cellular too. I'm always talking to my family, and I send three pictures of Cece every day, one for each grandchild. My kids haven't even seen a picture of Bruno. Oh. Oh. Get talk, text, and data as low as $20 a month with Consumer Cellular. Ranked number one in customer service by J.D. Power. See how much you can save at ConsumerCellular.com or find us at Target. Tracking rain on this Wednesday. We're going to be dealing with the rain through the morning, tapering off to showers and a little drizzle later this afternoon with our next weather maker. Temperatures today, for the most part, in the 40s. Tomorrow's looking a lot better. We'll see brighter skies and temperatures reaching the lower 60s. Tracking our next weather maker heading into the upcoming weekend. We'll have temperatures in the 70s on Friday, in the 50s on Saturday. But a lot of changes coming. Keep up to date on WJLA.com slash weather.